So, <laughs> good afternoon again. <laughs> I'm going to present this work, which was also part of my master thesis, but was also done with my colleague Ezequiel Fuentes and, of course, my advisor Claudia Meneses. So, what's the outline for this talk? First, the introduction to, of course, introduce the topic of sentiment analysis applied on paper reviews. Then, the challenges that are associated with this domain. After that, the methods that we tested and then the experiments and the results, and of course, the conclusions. So, we are going to describe the problem first. We are going to try to apply sentiment analysis techniques on scientific paper reviews. This was known as a proof of concept. We didn't try to optimize all the, all the performance of the application. We just wanted to see if this approach could work and if it could be applied for something in this area. So, the data set that we have has around 400 instances which are evaluated with labels such as very negative, negative, neutral, positive and very positive which are associated with the uh, paper's rejection or acceptance. Our data set has the following attributes. For the record, we got this data set from an international conference of computing and informatics in Chile which has been held annually for a few years, yeah. So we had the timestamp which corresponded to the date of the conference. We had a paper ID, which was a unique identifier for a paper inside a conference. And then a review ID, which was a serial number associated with each paper. So for example, paper one had review one and review two. Paper two had review one, review two, review three, etc. Then we also had the main parts of the data set, which is the text itself, which are the main comments contained in the review. Then the remarks that were only available for the editors of the, for the chairs of the conference. And finally, the language. Since this was an inter international conference in Chile, we had some reviews in English and some reviews in Spanish. For simplicity, we decided to only keep the reviews in Spanish since the reviews in English were a small percentage. So to avoid all the multilingual problems associated with sentiment analysis, we decided to keep it simple. So some statistics about this data set. As I said, we only considered reviews in Spanish and we omitted empty reviews. Yes, we found some empty reviews that had some score associated. So they said re re reject or accept, but they had no text in them. But other than that, we have the following statistics. So for example, the shortest review has three words and one sentence, of course. And the most verbose one had around 500 and like around a little less than 550 sentences. And you can see the average number of words and sentences per review and their standard deviations. As you can see, there is a lot of variation between those reviews. So that's our data set. What differences this domain from other reviews, like for example, movie reviews or product reviews in other places? So in other domains, we are used to see informal language in, re in reviews and many orthographical and grammatical problems, uses of abbreviations and other kinds of things that difficult the application of sentiment analysis. In contrast, academic paper reviews use a mostly formal language and we expect that there will, will not be that many orthographical or grammatical problems. Also, there are still some, but not that many. And another important difference is that they are not publicly av available. It's not easy to get all these paper reviews. We had to move some connections there with my advisor to get all these reviews and of course preserve the anonymity of the reviewers. So. That's the difference between the other domains, between the other the domains. And what are some associated challenges here? Well, we have a problem of class balance, since in these reviews there is a, a strong bias, or not necessarily that strong, but there is a bias towards negativity in most of these reviews. <laughs> there is also a difference in the number of corrections. As you could, as you could see from the statistics, there were some reviewers that were quite verbose and some others that were laconic and said something like, 
reject this paper, something like that. So we have that problem that there is a varying number of corrections. And there is also the main issue here that is the consistency between opinion and evaluation. What do we mean in this, with, by, by this? Opinion is what the reviewer expresses in the text. So if I take the review and I read it, I see, no, this clearly has been accepted. And then I see the evaluation and it says rejected. So we have that problem. So let's go for a, a simple example. We have here very good work and evaluated with one star, for example. Of course, that's an extreme case. That's not going to happen, but it's to give the idea. Or another problem there, this article presents serious methodological problems and it gives four stars. Well, that could happen. It depends on the reviewer's own biases. And this is a problem for the ones that have to take the final decision on the paper. We could have the situation here where this professor has different reviews that one says accept, other says reject, and other says minor or major revisions. So we have this problem of consistency between what is written in the text and what is said in the evaluation. So to study this, we have two scales, which were the same we used for the barycentric paper that I presented earlier. We have the orientation scales which is a number that represents the orientation of a review based on what is written on it. So I take a review, I read it, and I say, this is paper is obviously accepted or it's clearly rejected. And then it is the evaluation scale that represents the final evaluation given by the reviewer, which could be one of the numbers that we have there. We use a numerical scale. So as you can see from this confusion matrix that we built here, evaluation is slightly uniformly distributed, while orientation has this bias towards negativity, because if one reads the reviews, it would seem that most of them are negative. And there is also not that many extreme values. In fact, here are the histograms of the distributions. As you can see, it's clearly biased towards negativity there. And there are not that many extreme values for the orientation, which is our perception of the text. <coughs> and for evaluation, you can see that it's more evenly distributed. So that's the idea for the main. Now, what methods did we evaluate? What did we apply? We applied classical algorithms, naive bias, and support vector machines. Since this was just a proof of concept, we didn't want to use state-of-the-art methods like deep learning or, or so. We also handcrafted a scoring algorithm, which is basically a keyword matching technique. And then we had this hybrid method that combines the scoring algorithm with the support vector machine. So how does the scoring algorithm work in a very high level way? We have the following. We have opinion lexicons, which contain several words with their meanings on their influence on the text, on the, on the polarity of each sentence and what effects they have on the text in general. We also use part of a speech tagging to complement the dictionaries to see the function of the word in each sentence. And we also use SentiWordNet to get a certain estimation of the score of each word. And having all this, we then iterated over the text. And for each sentence, we calculated a score based on all these elements. And then we average the score over all the document to find a final number there that is used to estimate based on certain thresholds if the class is negative, positive, or neutral, for perhaps. And that will be the scoring algorithm. What about the hybrid method? We combine the scoring algorithm, the result of the scoring algorithm, which is just a real number, and a support vector machine. So we have our text data that then goes to two pipelines. First, it uses the classical TF-IDF representation. Then we fit that to Latin semantic analysis. And that generates a vector for the document. On the other hand, we apply part of a speech tagging, then feed it to the scoring algorithm, and this gives us a real number. Then we combine these two together, and we have a new vector, and we train a support vector machine with that. And that generates the results. So how do we evaluate this? For each scale and each method, three cases were evaluated. First, we use binary classification where we simply omitted the neutral cases, which is the easiest case in this 
this problem. Then we added the neutral clays for ternary classification, and then we had the full scale classification with five classes. So what were the results? For orientation, which is the perception of the text, we obtained the following results. In binary classification, the scoring algorithm obtained the best results, although the hybrid method is competitive with this, but, and it surpassed the baseline of support vector machines and naive values. For ternary classification, the hybrid score, scoring algorithm won, and finally for full scale, the hybrid algorithm also was superior, also not by a big margin compared to the regular scoring algorithm. This was for orientation, which is our perception of the text. Now what happens when we turn to evaluation, which is the scores that the reviewers give to the paper? Now in this case, the, score, the hybrid scoring algorithm still wins, however, you can see that in general, there is a drop in the performance of the classifiers. We believe that this is because of the problem of consistency, since what is written on the text, what is said on the text, doesn't really correlate with what is given in the evaluation. So we have this drop in performance. So a little bit of discussion of the results. The best performance occurs in the binary case as is expected since it's the easier problem. We obtain good results with the hybrid method, and this gives us the idea that adding more semantic information, such as the one encoded by the scoring algorithm to machine learning methods, classical machine learning methods, such as support vector machines, can improve the performance of these methods. And of course, the possible application of this is to aid in the process of paper reviewing, in the sense that, for example, the in a workshop or in a conference, we could have this algorithm evaluate the reviews that were given by the reviewers of certain papers and see if they are consistent with what they are, have actually said about the evaluation. So that will be the future applications that we want to go. That will be the future lines. So, in, su in summary, we applied sentiment analysis on the domain of paper reviews. As far as we know, this hasn't been done before as far as we know, it's the first time that we, someone uses sentiment analysis techniques on paper reviews, since generally acquiring paper reviews datasets is kind of hard. And for future work, we want to test state-of-the-art algorithms in this, and of course, perhaps create a platform, platform that could help with this process of reviewing. So, well, that is my presentation. Thank you. So, any questions? <laughs>